David and I were reading from that sheet of Archigram, which was produced in the basement of an office in W1 called James Cubitt and Partners, which has an interesting history, because a certain James Sterling had worked there and been sacked for reading the newspaper, and I was subsequently sacked for being a disruptive influence, and David survived it a bit longer. And all sorts of interesting people came through, um, and you may, the, 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 the real arch archival connoisseur may note that on the front of Archigram 1, it says, Editor David Osborne. Neither David nor I were mentioned as the editor because we had, we had the notion that you might be struck off the RIBA. We were, we were that concerned about such things. Now, not that either of us, I think, was a member at the time, but we, we were worried you might be struck off it if you were seen to be editing a magazine, how naive we were. So we got an interesting bloke in the office called David Osborne to, to put his name on that. Just, just, this is, since this is an archival occasion, I thought such incredibly tedious details might be of interest to somebody. But it was produced in the basement. I think um, David chatted up the very attractive secretary of, of the office so that she would run off hundreds of these, these sheets. And across the street, next door to what was then Cedric Price's office, also in a basement in George Street, just around the corner, was a very, very cheap printer. And I think we rustled together about £11 or something, which was the cost of printing this sheet. And we then stapled. And I thought that it ought to have a bit of colour. And so I went home and brought a potato. And the authentic red dot is, is I guarantee you, a potato print. The, the fake copies of Archigram 1 use a rather neater printing. You can tell the difference, whether it's got potato chemical in it or, or not. Um, and it was, I think we had no, we had no... Yeah, there are, there are underground fake copies of Archigram 1. There may well be. <laughs> you want the fireball? Uh, <laughs> I have to resort to that. And, and I, I'm not sure quite what went through our mind. We, we had this group of people who met once or twice, not the actual known Archigram group, but a, really an, a, another funny circuit of people. Um, including some people that, that Mike or I or whoever knew. We met usually up in sort of areas of inner North London. And I seem to remember that David and Mike and I, Mike being spider, um, were the people who said, we'll do the broadsheet. And we did the broadsheets, and, and the others sort of dropped away. And as soon as we started doing competitions, uh, and some of the others were cross competitors, it, the whole... So the broadsheet was a broadsheet mouthpiece of a sort of group that, that never was really a group. But if you look carefully at the big sheet of Archigram 1, you'll find names like John Utram and Bob Manley and other, other people who were, I think, if my memory serves me, party to some of the original conversations. And I think in the passage of time, what is fascinating, again, I'm, 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 I'm making a reference to the presumed archival nature of, of this event today. Um, in a way, any archiving or any viewing of archigram has to not only do that thing which Bob was alluding to this morning, which is that the, the range of media are not only very many, not only is the range of implicit media, but it is the mix that has to be taken on board as an infinite mix. You might use a potato print, but you might use something that's wired up. You might use memory. And, 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 and in, in, in the Ron, in the, in the videoing of Ron, in a simulation of a project that did not exist. The real guy did exist. The simulation didn't exist. The statement was in real time. It's then frozen, recorded, subsequent generations, if they can see the picture or hear it, will experience it again. And that's just a little tiny, tiny microcosm. I think the other thing is it's, 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 it's you know, the evocative thing, hearing Ron, is to hear, for me, and makes me feel very strange, is hearing the voice. Not The, the documentation of drawings can be done. The, the reproduction of statements, and why I get slightly narky about people who just 
discuss the, the printed word with another bit of printed word is that they miss the essence of the thing, which is the, not only the inventions, but the personality of the invention. And the voice, while we still remember that voice, is evocative. You hear that Ron was a Londoner. Very important aspect. He was the only actual Londoner, a lot of us. You hear that Ron was a gentle, relaxed person. Though he had certain pent-up frustrations and would get more angry than any of us when he did get angry. I've seen him angry maybe six times in my knowing of him. And he would get viciously, bitterly angry, more than Dennis or Elizabeth and me could ever get. And, that, and the voice, when you hear it, it summarises both that amazing gentleness, but also that sort of determination. Because he drew so relaxedly, and he drew so, and it's an apocryphal but true story, he drew so fast and so relaxedly that his cigarette was held in a certain way running behind the repeatograph so that the ink would dry. That's even a line for the fact he was using fast drying ink. But I digress. And Warren, we don't talk, we haven't talked so far about scholarship, that sort of hallowed word. Uh, we've all earned money by teaching in schools of architecture. I don't mean that. I mean actual scholarship. I think Warren was a scholar. I think he knew a lot about the relationship of the 1940s to the 1950s. Maybe because he was the oldest, but I think he'd actually thought about it. And I remember having a wonderful teacher way back in Bournemouth days called Ron Sims, who'd also been a glider pilot in the war, and it was the first person to, to talk to me uh, way back then about the significance of all the inventions that were made for the war effort. Lots of them to do with glues, as a matter of fact. Glues and pins and strings and types of wood and types of you know, things that you could get out of the ground and so on. And in, in, in this work that he did for um, Archigram 6, Warren trapped over that territory. And um, I think it's great pity that he never documented it further. But it's, it, 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 if Archigram, as a 60s phenomenon, was the inevitable child of the 1950s, which I do remember, it was, a, was a fascinating period, which owes as much to the art schools as to anything else. Then the 50s itself owed, as an extraordinary background, an enormous amount to the 40s. And this is a, this is a train of, of, of uh, anecdotal evidence, or whatever it might be now, which I think, again, could be boring to some people, could be irritating to some people, and is going to be difficult to archive. Uh, but it's there as well, and again, it's a very English phenomenon, the whole, the whole thing of, of uh, doing things with funny bits of string and wires and all of that, did have a period of intense importance, which was in fact the Second World War, when it was only this sort of lateral thinking and funny ways with bits of string and bits of wires that probably enabled us to survive. Can I ask you a nitpicky archival question? Yep. <laughs> you know, that, can you go back to the, mm -hmm. to the image from the 40s? I've always wondered why it was laid out as though it were um, a, um, yeah, as though it were negative, so it's obviously- it was. Well, can't be. These images that are cut out, they can't be. They're no, drawings and they are. I can show you the strips of negatives. These are all strips. I have them in these the are archive. all actual strips of negatives that. Yeah, that Warren. I mean, it, it's quite straightforward. Warren gave me piles and piles of books with bits, bits of paper and, and said, "Photograph all those." So I photographed all those and did in contact sheets. And he said, "That's great. We'll print it like that." Mm -hmm. So they're the contact sheets that were made from the research that Warren produced and gave me to photograph. Okay. That's art. <laughs>